Hey guys, uh, this is Whitfile Ravped. And I'm Ravsef Bikram. And we are here to recreate the presentation from reassembly. Uh, originally, Ravsef wasn't able to attend, so I presented on his behalf. However, there was an issue with the recording, so now we have the good fortune to be able to have Ravsef as part of this talk, which is great. And we're going to be talking about the Quartus app called Channel. Uh, which is basically the decentralized distributed 4chan that we've all been dreaming of. Uh, so wraps up, do you want to give a little bit about the inspiration here and, and a high level overview? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think we'll talk about this uh, a little bit later in the talk, but one of the things that I like to do when I'm programming in Hoon and one of the things that my company likes to do is sort of fulfill uh, conceptions of Urbit. So Urbit can be sort of conceived or viewed from a lot of different angles as the API engine in your in your garage that stores all your data from Facebook or as the new center of your social media or as this Web3 engine like Ukbar is, is viewing it that's going to allow you to do all these fanciful things on the blockchain or whatever. But a lot of these visions are possible under the core structure of Urbit and requires some expression in user space applications. And channel is sort of a foray into that space. Um, it's nice because it allows users to sort of boot up just the client version of an image board. So it's taking in content from some central server and then allowing them to comment on it or post their own new threads or whatever. But with a little bit of zhuzhing, and this is not instructed to the user. So the user has to kind of figure this out on their own, but with a little bit of zhuzhing, they can turn their orbit into their own server that then distributes content for them to their friends. So those are sort of the, the things that I thought were interesting about the concept. That's really cool. Yeah. And, you know, when I was first getting into orbit as a noob, I could really relate to the story. Uh, when Herbert was first described to me, that was basically how I pictured it. It's like having the sovereignty of your own server and you know being able to tell it to do your bidding across the internet. Um, and you know when you first get on as a noob, there's certain things you have to learn to get started. So this idea for me that Quartus is a group of people that are bootstrapping this knowledge to make software like this is super exciting. Um, and it also overlapped with the interest that I have in digital sovereignty. Um, which is something Quartus is thinking about doing, I know, uh, with biometrics in the future. Um, and so pretty much all of the technical points you just hit, in addition to making the ease of browsing the internet, uh, you know, making that available to the average person, it's also providing all of these privacy uh, and, you know, uh, sovereignty and pluses as well. Yeah, those are all great additions. Um... There are some other things about the construction of channel that I think we can talk about in a, in a minute as well that I like from a, a, a Hoon technical perspective too, or I guess it's Urbit technical as well. But anyway, uh, a lot of a lot of different ways that this is expressing the core concepts of Urbit, the, the, the product channel. Awesome. Um, cool. Well, so let's get into some of the uh, more specifics of channel. Uh, how does it work? So th this is uh, what I was alluding to a second ago. I wasn't sure if this was the next thing that we'd talk about or not. But yeah, so one of the other things that's... Okay, so, so the way that channel works is it piggybacks off of the extant social network software that exists on Urbit. So this is the graph and group and metadata uh, and all of these other different... Uh, stores that exist for graph information. Um, a, an image board is really just a graph like any other um, graph that you would see in social media. It's pr primarily a central node, which is the server, and then a bunch of uh, possible branches into uh, threads of, of content, right? And those might be structured however they may be. Um, and Channel wasn't about to reinvent that whole design. So instead, what it did was it took the extant software that exists on everyone's orbit and sort of uh, reused or abused, as you might want to construe it, the, those systems to allow Channel to create this sort of anonymized uh, image board that can then be distributed on those same uh, means. So it also 
channel doesn't reproduce the means of communication between ships. It piggybacks off of that from that central graph store system as well. What I think is really great about that from that like orbit fulfillment perspective, again, is um, that one of the promises is it's your software so you can do what you want with it. So if I see a piece of software that does something that I like and I want it to be expressed in a slightly different way with a different interface and having different rules about who can post and things like that, I can do that with just a little bit of expression in Hoon. And it's one of the things that we thought was really interesting about it. Awesome. Yeah, and the other point there is um, you were talking about how by showing this way of recombining a lot of the tools that Urban gives you out of the box, you're also inspiring other devs to think about ways that they can combine things and show them that bootstrapping Hoon may not be as tall of an order as one might think. Yeah, that that's a great point. And we're working on at Cordis more technology in that direction. Um, we, I, I'm, I'm not sure when the viewer will be viewing this, but uh, assembly two or whatever we're calling the second assembly. Uh, we're going to hopefully be doing a presentation there about middleware, which is something that we're working on, uh, a concept that we're working on and, and, and new expressions of that concept that we're working on. And basically the idea is currently we have it as wrapper libraries for agents. So these are agent, agent transformers, but there are other ways that you might express middleware as well. But it's something like, I have this agent that does all of these great things that I like, but I want to. I just want to change how that behaves in in this or that context. So I want to paywall the ability for people to do this or that with that agent, or I want to uh, back up this or that. And those those concepts are are similar. It's sort of composing the the data that you have on your ship, and then even composing the composing with the applications that are running on your ship, or something like that. Very cool. Um, so let's talk about this blog post that you guys did uh, from the Cordis philosophical arm. Uh, you guys, yeah, so this uh, QR code here is a link to it uh, if you want to check it out. And um, yeah, I mean, the way I describe it is that, you know, this blog post is just as much about plants as it is software, which I think is great. Um, yeah, so do you want to talk a little bit about how this plant metaphor is achieving some of the things you were alluding to, alluding to on the previous slide? Yeah, and I should also mention that the there are four authors to the blog post, uh, three of whom are from Reciprocal Limited, which is the other company that Cordis worked with to produce Channel. Um, but the the article is basically. <sighs> Sometimes uh, software is kind of an expression of a lot of different things, not just the the thing that it is. Um, and the thing that it is in this case is a fairly simple piece of software that gates who can post to a notebook and graph store, right? Like ultimately that's what we're talking about. But the, the thing that it's about is uh, amongst other things, those concepts that we talked about like sovereignty and, 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 uh, code or be coded, which I actually really like that now that you've kind of brought that, um, I don't know what you would call that, that phrase to, to my attention, but th these sorts of things are expressed uh, in channel as well as a lot of different feelings that came from a lot of different places. Um, and I think it's really interesting. These are explored in the, in the blog post that is, that's linked here. I won't, I won't, dare to try to express what the others who wrote in that uh, post uh, attempted to express in, in their sections. But in mine, it's something like channel is a parasitic entity that uh, is, is sort of a good parasite or a beautiful parasite. Like um, orchids are sort of, they have this like mycorrhizal uh, relationship where they, um, get a lot of their early energy off of uh, um, mycelium that's that's in like the the crap that they're sitting in, like the whatever leaf matter that they're sitting in. Um, and there's no return to the mycelium for that. Like they just kind of leech off of it. But then they produce this really beautiful flower that can be really nicely appreciated. And I felt like Channel was something like that. Like it, Graph Store gets no thanks <laughs> for uh, just... First, generally, although um, I'm sure that there are, are good reasons for people's consternation in either direction, but um, it gets no thanks for 
producing channel in the sense that, you know, it's not gratified by serving channel in the way that it does, but I think it produces a really beautiful end result. And I think Arbit has an analog in the sense that it, it kind of sits in your mind and produces these new thoughts about how the internet might be and how computing might be. And you have to do a lot of the work to feed into Urbit right now. It's not out of the box ready and it's not um, feature complete for all users into perpetuity, right? But, but if you engage with it right now and if you kind of take it in and if you provide it some of that, um, some of that escape velocity that it needs, it can like reach those heights of, of real beauty in, in, its, in its full expression. Awesome. Um, so yeah, so that's why you guys refer to yourselves as seed bombers then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, I think we also, um, yeah, we, we, we really like the idea that channel is, is sprouting things off of extant like architecture. And that's kind of what the seed bombing thing is. I don't know if you've heard of urban seed bombing or like people who do this, but they actually do like ball up little wildflower seeds and they'll throw them into parking lots and things like that. So there's this extant architecture, right? Yeah. You were going to say. Yeah. Yeah. I think, no, that's great for like reclaiming space. And um, just for me, observing this process from the outside as someone who's also getting spending more and more time building on urban, uh, the fact that you really can just like sink your hands into Hoon and get started. And the fact that you learn like some basic tropes and basic patterns, and then you can just like read the entire operating system and, you know, and see, and see, you know, that's like something that a single person can actually get through versus the extent software. That's like, that has a lot of red tape for getting involved with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, Channel is a great, easy to understand use case. Uh, as I said, when I was first introduced to Urbit, I kind of thought that's all that was happening is people were spinning up their own servers to communicate in these private ways. Obviously, you get a lot of that from the chat applications that are built in, but this is a way of customizing it. And I think that's going to be super inspiring. That's what's going to plant the seeds in new devs' heads. Like, oh, this is you know permeable. There's things that I can do. Um, so. On that point, you guys get, you know, Urbit has the reputation of being a, a pretty religious place. I think this last metaphor is, pre is pretty apt in the fall in a sympathetic crowd. Um, yeah, do you want to expand on it a little bit? Yeah, um, I, I can, I actually can remember where I got this metaphor from in my life. So I'll tell the little life story quickly. Um, nice. I was... I was working at H and R Block in their like tech department, doing servicing for like their offices, right? So like those people would call us when they had problems, and I worked with this Hasidic guy who was really smart, and all we would ever do is talk about science fiction novels because he read a ton of science fiction novels, and so did I at the time, at least. And so we would kind of talk about them, and we were talking about the Diamond Age, and like. I thought the Diamond Age was fascinating because I was like, cool, it's the breakdown of the state in this, like, Randian, like, libertarian uh, upstart cultures that are that exist and, and kind of still succeed and whatever. And I, I didn't really make much of the ending of Diamond Age with, like, the ability to, if you'll recall the, the premise, it's like they have matter fabricators and this guy designs something that can grow in the ground and be tended to that can then matter fabricate or something like that. That's the ultimate kind of overarching story that's happening. And he was like, the point is that it's important to work. It's important to serve and to tend to things. And you can't just have everything given to you automatically or something like that was, was his perception of that ultimate point. My perception was just look at all this neat technology and isn't Neil Stevenson interesting at writing science things? And so, like, I, I didn't get as much out of it as him. But one of the other things that he told me is that the reason that he is a Hasidic person, and this is, relates to, like, the need to put in work into something to receive the benefit of it, right? The, he, the reason that he is a Hasidic person wore a square garment is that 
the, one of the Levitican, or I think that's right, one of the Levitican requirements is that if you're wearing a square garment, it should have tassels at each corner. And obviously, those most garments then were square, and so that like meant something. And most garments today are not square, and so it is less impactful. Uh, even if you were abiding by it, by simply avoidance, right? Like you can avoid the the need to do that thing. Um, but in order to get the most out of that covenant, the Hasidic believe the covenant with God, the, the the Levitican covenant with God, the Hasidic people believe, or at least this is how it was related to me, that it is important to go through the motions of fulfilling all of those promises, even if it is not necessary for you to go through that, uh, to, to initiate the uh, instantiation of the promise, to wear a square garment, in other words. And I, I always thought that that was just a really cool way of looking at things. It's a very boxer the horse from Animal Farm, like, I'll just try harder kind of attitude towards, like, encountering uh, and, and receiving um, the benefit out of some agreement that you have with someone. And one of the things that I think that, that, that my company seeks to do is to find those those facets of Arbit, the different vistas, the different ways of looking at Arbit that exist and attempt to, and succeed hopefully, express those ways of conceiving of Arbit through the software that we produce. And so we're trying to fulfill all of those possible covenants that Urbit, Urbit can make with its users in the user space sense. I think why this metaphor is particularly apt is because you're you know, talking about superimposing shapes as things evolve. And so much of, uh, well, I think is it the next slide? Yeah, middleware are Quartus. I mean, I've just heard you speak about Quartus as like, serving this role of providing the necessary middleware, you know, thinking of like, how can we ship functionality, uh, you know, between the things that already exist. So if you think about creating, you know, wearing, intentionally wearing a square garment in order to, you know, uphold that covenant, um, what becomes interesting from a technological stance is like, what types of data shapes need to be created? Is there a way to create, you know, like a universal store Right, like a universal uh, place to hold these shapes of data that can then be plugged into different apps that either Quartus is building or that can then be bootstrapped by other developers with other ideas. Yeah, it's a really complex and then also sort of fractal problem. Like, I guess you can look at the shapes that can be created of gall agents, right? Like that's one shape that can be created. And then the shapes that can be created between gall agents, the, the on peak arms that they have, right? So the ability to scry between them and the on poke arms and so on. Right. Um, and yeah, you, you can just keep abstracting this narrative of like, what are the possible fulfillments of, of, of this shape that's been given to you. So like sin since we've left dynamic gall, we have static gall arms. And so we have a static shape that we're, ex that we're expecting. What are the possible fulfillments of that? And there are ways of th that. That's maybe in a, a maladroit metaphor because like you can expand on, on how a, a gall agent works. And one of the things that we're trying to do is apply these wrapper or wrapper libraries to gall agents that produce additional cores on top of them that transform the library. This is how bank works, uh, or tra transform the agent, I should say, uh, with the use of a library uh, into some superstructure that can then do other things. But again, that is something like examining the fulfillment of that, that like the exercise that is gall agents are very easy to build user space applications that you can make for your friends or something like that, right? So do you wanna just, can you walk us through these three apps here? and yeah exactly what they're doing and the progress of each one yeah i suppose i should do that that's a good idea <laughs> <laughs> awesome. so um I'll, I'll start from the bottom up because we have one that's out today and that's cool. pete uh pete is a in fact i just pushed an update to pete probably a half an hour ago now um but pete is a backup agent for graph store it allows you to set a timer for how often you'd like to back up graphs that you host or that other people host. It doesn't really matter. It's agnostic to that point. Uh, but it'll put them out to disk for you so that you could restore them post-breach should you need to on that ship. 
Uh, it also allows you to restore from backup uh, without that ever hitting clay. So you just like put the files in uh, a, a, a website front end and that automatically generates a new graph for you in a new group and spins all that stuff up for you. Um, so that's out today and it's working for people uh, already. And I hope that it works for you as you guys move forward, uh, whoever's watching this. Um, but keep the next product on the list is fairly similar, although it's been abstracted to the point of just doing the exercise for the agent generally. So we built a special one for GraphStore because of the sort of depth and breadth of information that exists in GraphStore today. It's kind of a lot. Um, there are other applications that, like for instance, Gora, another product that we produced that would have a smaller state that you might feel like pretty comfortable with just backing up the whole thing rather than components of it. Um, if you're backing up the whole thing, you can use Keep to do that. And Keep will let you back up your state to your computer locally, to like a jam file, to your local instance of Keep. So if you have like Gora running, you can back up to Keep. And then if you nuke Gora, you could put the state back in or whatever or, and this is the most interesting one, to a remote destination. So this will allow for service providing, right? So you could have your star running keep, and your star could take in information for all of its descendants, right? Um, and then the last product, that, that, that will be out by assembly this year, so that's uh, 2022, the end of September, basically. Um, Bank as well will be out by the end of September and what bank is designed to do bank is our first foray into serving agent transformers. Uh, so producing those as software that other people can use bank is a fairly complex. No, I should say it's a fairly simple complex that belies, uh, uh, concept that belies us, uh, a, a, a great deal of like flexibility in its execution. So the basic gist of it is you can do two things. You can paywall some action in an agent, right? So you can say, um, I want to check to make sure that anyone who has is trying to interact with this function has sent me at this address one ETH this month or something like that, right? And obviously, probably, probably a little steep at those prices, but whatever the price would be. Um, you can also store information about the comings and goings of... Um, transactional amounts in and out of a variety of addresses that you are watching. So this would be something like the ability to store a custodial wallet. So you could see how much money came in from what file and how much came in from RABSEF. And then if you needed to serve that back in your like exchange that you're running on your orbit, right? You could go, okay, what file has this much Bitcoin and RABSEF has that much Bitcoin or whatever. Um, but bank, we're hoping to ship on top of keep so that we can, I, I, I can't say that we're the first here, but we're trying to find a way to get to monetization of service providing on Urbit. And we think that um, a decent shot towards that would be keep hosted on a star that uh, can take incoming subscribers and store their state for them for breach um, revision, right? And so like the idea would be, you, probably something like you pay a one-time startup fee uh, to start backing up your state and then a one-time recovery fee to recover your state, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, so th th those are those products. Bank will be out alongside Keep. And one of the great things about Bank is that we've intended it to be uh, reapplied to your agents, you, the developer out there watching this. Um, as you get the library, you should be able to kind of build it in and start handling some of those cases. And we're also just an aside here. This is because this is something that's pressing in my mind. Um, we're thinking about ways. So like, imagine that you have bank paywalling some poke, right? Uh, on, on your application and it's related to some foreign application. So like, uh, I'm a service provider and I shipped a version of, of keep that's like pre-configured to point to my server and has bank installed on it so that you're going to know when you're out of money and you're going to be able to pay us and everything. Well, how do you get the interfacing working if keep wasn't built with that in mind? We have some ideas for this and I think, you know what, I, I won't spoil the idea, but we're thinking about ways to make it so that our agent transformers can also like slipstream in information 
uh, in front of the display that the user is used to using when interacting with the agent. So, like, you'll have your normal agent that you're just, you know, working on, right? And then, like, banks should be able to produce modal pop-ups in front of that agent to go, hey, wait a minute, you need to top up on your payment to this person before you try and do this action because you don't have enough money. So those are the directions that we're going with that. That's something that I think is like a really interesting um, confounding of the idea of bank that has led to some interesting thoughts about how to like creatively solve that. Very cool. Um, looking ahead for your future plans or plans, uh, these, as you described them to me, these seem to be more, uh, what's the right word? More like self-contained for, I and mean, full stop is a period tracker you guys are working on, right? Um, yeah. and yeah, so maybe if the previous, if the core of Cordis is like this middleware philosophy, it seems like what's on the roadmap down the road will be what happens once a lot of this functionality is out there and how can we make something that's more standalone? Is that... Right well, I'll, I'll tell you, I think, I think the core is still there in these standalone things. Well, let me, let me back up one step. So full stop is a standalone application and, and will be for the foreseeable future. But I can conceive of a world where full stop actually integrates with something that is more like the second concept displayed on mm -hmm. screen here. In fact, I know that somebody is working towards a more generalized biometric store which is something that we'd like to see full stop maybe integrate with optionally based on the user's preferences at some later date, right? Like one of the things that's, just to be clear, that full stop is, is a realization of another promise of Orbit, which is like the big tech companies can no longer turn over your data to the authorities to prosecute you for things that you don't think should be crimes. <laughs> like that, that, that's a that's a fairly big uh, ambition. This is a fairly small stab at it, right? But it was something that we thought was important to build as well. Um, but it also, it can be an expression of this, of the second concept that we have on the screen. And this is something that's kind of been in the back of my mind for a while and that I've been talking about with the boys at Quartus for a while. And that is full stop also incidentally being built with reciprocal limited. We work with them oftentimes, but uh, not always. So just thought I'd call it out. Uh, the second concept though, is something like when I build an agent and I ship it, it has a shape for its state and I can express in the scries as much or as little of that state as I want. Right. And, and in that way, I can make the internals of my agent as available or unavailable or, or as obfuscated or inobfuscated as I want them to be. Right. And that presents, I think, a problem for one of the promises of Urbit, which is do whatever you want with your data. Right. Like if I want to sort of hack on the data that's coming into my note taking agent, knowing like, uh, is it, is it, it's, is it fumes? That's not what how it's pronounced. Is it is it funes? Is that what it is? I'm not sure. Yeah, I've only oh, seen okay. it written. All right. Well, we we know what we're talking about, and you do too if you're watching this. But yeah. uh, if I if I wanted to hack on the data coming out of that, but maybe there hadn't been a scry, there, there isn't a scry built in to ask for it in the way that I want. Right. This can be problematic in terms of the expression of that promise. And so one of the things that we've been thinking about is ways of resolving that, including something like an agent or yeah well something like an agent that is some way of expressing state that does not require the original coder to uh, reveal the the state through a sufficiently robust series of scries so there should be some way of taking the shape out at will and manipulating it, even if not to put it back in, but merely to use it externally, right? And and, and do some other d data manipulation with it. And this is the, the thing of store store. And like we say, like you say here, I should say, uh, it, it's something like what could, a, what would a generalized biometric store look like such that you could write any N number of agents against it to, to store M types of data about the human body, right? And what would a, what would a generalized food tracker look like such that you could start with one that's about, you know, keto and move to one that's more promotive of, um, 
what do they call it? The holistic eating diet where it's like eat whatever you feel. I don't I don't know. Have you ever heard of that one? It's insane. I, but I haven't, but I think that's what I do. So Yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah. But yeah. I also know that's not a good diet. practice. Right, right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can imagine all these different ways where you could have the state over here as this shape and different agents could be able to access it and sort of pick up where the last one left off. If you don't like full stop and you want to keep your biometric data from that as you transition to some other, like, you know, the archdiocese period tracker that definitely, you know, make sure that you're using the rhythm method or whatever, that's fine, and you should be able to do that. And it shouldn't rely on me writing adequate scries in full stop. Yeah, that seems, I mean, that's one of the original promises of Urbit. It's like if you, if DigitalOcean shuts down your hosting service, you have everything, you can just pick it up and move it somewhere else. So what I'm getting from this is it's like, how can we build the type of software on Urbit that makes it so that the, uh, like the user, like, eschew this distinction between like user and developer, like produce tools that will allow the agency for the user to be able to have an idea, have an idea of like how the internet should work or something they want to do with their own information and um, learn a few tools and then be able to enact that. That's, that's a hundred percent. it. That's exactly right. Couldn't have said it better. Cool. Cool. Well, thanks for the rundown. Uh, and everything that's happening at Cordis. Um, how, how can people find you? How can people get involved? We just started a website. It's Cordis.co. That's uh, Q-U-A-R-T-U-S dot C-O. Um, it is currently a landing page, but we will have more content there soon. Also, we are in the process of moving all of our software to a central distribution ship. Um, we think that that's important as 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 those people who are distributing software grows, the number of people that are doing that grows, we think it's important to have kind of a centrally branded and, and consistent ship to distribute those softwares so that sure. you know that you're getting it from the right place. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that you're not downloading yeah. a version that shares all of your data with somebody else or whatever. And that's right. Dister Dazad Dalton. Dister Dazad Dalton. So all the software will be there soon. Uh, you can keep an eye out there for an upcoming new uh, applications. Awesome. Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, I mean, it was unfortunate that the original presentation was lost, but it's great that we got to do it again and have you speak, you know, as the creator of this stuff. And um, anybody with questions yeah. should check out Cordis.co, right? Yeah, and we're really thankful that you were there to present for us the first time. And, and you know, I'm, I'm very thankful that you were kind enough to have me this time to talk through it with you. Absolutely. So thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. See you later.